You're listening to Stand Out Get Noticed, episode 222. Hi there, Rockstar, and welcome to Stand Out Get Noticed. I'm Christina Cantors with you here for episode 222. Now, if you are tuning in for the first time, um, I'm the founder of The C Method, which is a training company um, where I'm all about helping you to build a strong mindset and powerful communication skills. Now, if you find this podcast valuable, then I invite you to join my free Small Talk Made Simple class, which is a 10-day email series to help you talk about yourself effectively without bragging, of course, and to have enjoyable conversations, both socially and in the workplace. You can sign up for that at freeconfidencecourse.com. The link is also in the description of this podcast in your app. Okay, let's get into this week's topic, which is, I'm calling it, what are you waiting for? Now, I want you to have a think about, have you ever wanted to do something or achieve something, but you've been waiting? You've been waiting to feel more confident, You've been waiting to have more experience. You've been waiting to get more qualified. You've been waiting to gain some recognition from someone else before you go and do that thing. Now, this might play out in um, different areas of your life, but for the context of this podcast, and we talk about, you know, we're talking about the work context here. Has this ever played out in your mind? Once I have more experience, then I will apply for that promotion. Once I have that promotion, then I will feel successful. Once I have my idea clearly formulated in my head, then I will speak up. Once I feel confident, then I will do that presentation. Once I have that qualification, then I will be able to call myself an expert. Once my website is perfect, then I will launch my business. Have you ever had any of these stories play out in your mind? Now, these can be quite debilitating. They can hold us back, really. And, but it doesn't seem that, that, that damaging, you know. But what it comes down to is we're waiting for something to happen before we take action or we want something, we're waiting for something before we can feel happy or successful. And in this podcast, I want to bring some more awareness to this and, I, and my goal is for you to be a, become aware of of if you're telling yourself a story like this and how you might start to challenge it or start to unpack it. And I was inspired to do this episode because I've gone through something very, I've gone through this exact process um, with my apartment. So Aaron, my husband and I, uh, we live in a small one bedroom apartment in Elwood in Melbourne. And look, Elwood is a beautiful suburb, suburb. We're right next to the beach. It's such a beautiful spot. But our apartment is very small and it's very old. So it's, you know, the cupboards don't close properly and there's bits of, you know, paint coming off the walls and there's cracks in the bathroom tiles and every, it basically needs a full renovation. You know, it hasn't been touched since the 60s. <laughs> and Aaron's been living there for the last uh, 13 years. And I moved in with him about three and a half years ago. And since I've moved in, since since moving in three and a half years ago, I've always felt, I've always been telling myself, we're, we're going to move out, right? Eventually, we're going to move out. And once we, we move out, then we can buy nice things. Then... I'll feel comfortable and happy in my own home because for a very long time I would I let the size of the apartment really get to me. You know, it was because it's so small, you'd walk through the corridor and, you know, I might hit a shoe rack or hit one of the cupboards or get my sleeve caught on one of the door handles because that's how narrow the corridors were. And when that happened, I'd get so frustrated and I'd be like, oh, this damn apartment – and then what, what's worse was that uh, a, a construction, they started constructing a building next door and we had builders there from seven o'clock in the morning, banging away, making a hell of a lot of noise until 4 p.m. every single day. So not only was my apartment, in my mind, right, not only was my apartment small, old, cramped, 
um, in disrepair, um, we had these builders next door making all sorts of noise. So for me, being at home was not a pleasant experience. And in my mind, I kept thinking, oh, if only I lived in a different place or, you know, once we move out, then I'll be happy. Once we move out, then I'll be able to enjoy, um, you know, living here, my home life. And of course, you know, we've been saving up. So we're currently renting and we have wanted to, we're wanting to buy a place to move out to. So, and because we're only in a one better, it's quite small. So rent's pretty affordable. So we're actually saving quite a bit of money in order to move out. So that's been our plan. But the time that I've been living there, I have been, I've been feeling anxious, frustrated, you know, upset, um, and generally, you know, not, not all the time, but that, that would come up quite, quite a lot. And I eventually reached a point where I thought, you know what, we are choosing to stay in this apartment. And because of that, there is no point in me getting frustrated, upset, annoyed, because I spend a lot of time at home. So may as well try to enjoy it while you can. So that helped for a while. And so for the last, you know, year, year and a half, I've been, you know, doing okay, living at home, but still not, you know, fully, you know, enjoying being there. And then a couple of weekends ago, I went away with my beautiful sister, Zay, who you may have met before on the, on the show. Um, I took, I took them away to a beautiful Airbnb out in the, the forest and I said to Zay, you know what, let's just, I'm going to splurge on a beautiful getaway for us both. And we went away and this Airbnb was just gorgeous. It had floor to ceiling windows. It looked out to the beautiful like ferns and forests and it was just so tranquil and peaceful. And there was like cushions everywhere and throw rugs and coffee table books and a nice, beautiful, big kitchen. And I just, I just loved it there. And we really enjoyed our time there. And we were talking about how the experience of being in that Airbnb was quite hooger. Now, hooger is a word that I love. It's spelled H-Y-G-G-E, pronounced hooger. And it's a Danish word and it roughly translates to the art of being cozy. And um, so f- so for the Danes, it's all about um, having beautiful cushions and slow cooking a meal and enjoying it with your friends and wearing woolen socks and drinking hot chocolate by the fire and lighting candles and lighting more candles and lighting more candles and this just gorgeous, slow-paced, relaxed, cozy, you know, lifestyle. So for them, that's what hygge is. And this Airbnb was the epitome of hygge. And Zay and I just, we, we made banana bread. We had hot chocolate. We put on the fire. We, um, we got out some, it was like a no technology weekend. So we, we took out some, I brought some art supplies and we like sketched each other's faces and we went for long walks in the forest. And it was just so beautiful. It was a beautiful weekend. And after that weekend, I thought to myself, why can't I bring some of that into my apartment? Why do I have to go away for a special expensive weekend away to experience this beautiful coziness? So I came home and I was all inspired and I said to Aaron, can we please hooger up our home? Can we, can we just make, buy some nice things? And for a long time I had been, because, because I hadn't, been in love with, you know, my home, I hadn't, every time we needed like a new stuff for the home, I was like, oh, we'll just get some cheap stuff because we'll get nice stuff once we're in in a nice place. That's what I thought. But this time I said to Aaron, you know what? We deserve nice things and we deserve nice things now. I don't have to wait to be in a nice or a bigger apartment or whatever it is in order to experience beautiful, nice things now. And I said to Aaron, why don't we make this the coziest, funkiest, coolest, tiny apartment ever? And Aaron said, yeah, sure, let's do that. So we decluttered. We got rid of a bunch of crap that was gathering dust and didn't spark joy. We went out to the shops and we bought a bunch of 
beautiful throw rugs and cushions and candles. Of course, you've got to have candles if you want to be a hooger. And um, we bought some uh, pot plants as well because we didn't have any indoor plants and they really beautify your space. Some of you are thinking, Christina, I already do this. Why have you not been doing this already? It's just, that not that normal? But believe me, for me, that was not normal to go out and buy beautiful, nice things for my home. It just wasn't a thing for me. So Aaron potted a bunch of plants and now that we've got pot plants in the kitchen and the bathroom and the, we've got them everywhere, really. And, um, and it just looks so beautiful. And then last weekend, we went to a lamp store. Now, I can't say I've ever been inside a lamp store. I would always drive past a lamp store and go, how depressing. Who would ever go into a lamp store? But I stepped out of my comfort zone (laughs) and we went into this lamp store and we bought like three or four cute little lamps um, for our home and we brought them back and put one in the kitchen, one in the lounge room, one in the bedroom. And the difference it makes... Just having a, a, a lamp that emits like a beautiful warm glow. you got to put like a warm light globe in there as well. Not one of these cool daylight ones. It's got to be like a warm one. And it and adding that to the space that creates a lighting effect that is just so much more inviting, so much more cozy and much better than having like horrendous fluoro lights like glaring at you. So our home is now officially hooger. And um, I turned the bedroom into what I call my Zen palace, where I now have, we have, um, a, you know, my new lamp and I put in some like a burnt, like an aromatherapy burner thing with some like lavender oil. And now before bed, I go in there, I turn the lights down, I put on a candle, I put on um, like some meditation music through the speaker and I sit there and I journal and I wind down for bed and it is just so beautiful. And I feel like I'm in a day spa. And for a very long time, I it did not. And, and I, so the point of my story, and I thank you for your patience for listening. The point of my story is that I spent a long time feeling very negative feelings about my own home and waiting to move out in order to really enjoy being at home and being in this space and waiting to be in a quote, you know, better, nicer, newer place before I could buy myself nice things. And I realized that it was such a waste of that negative energy. Um, When I realized that I can live in a beautiful, joyful home right now, I can do it right now. And there is no need to wait. So This plays out, so this whole concept of if only then, you know, once I have this, once I have that, then then I'll be okay, then I'll be happy, then I'll be successful. I want you to understand that this is most likely holding you back, just like it held me back from enjoying my home. Um, So, you know, I'll share some some of those examples, um, again, that I shared, such as once I have more experience, then I'll apply, apply for that promotion. Maybe you're using language like if only. If only my boss would listen to me, then I'll be able to progress quicker. If only my work wasn't so demanding, then I would have more time for myself. If only I wasn't an introvert, then I'd be able to go to networking events, right? It goes on. If only my English was better, I'd be able to have great conversations. If only I didn't have this fear of going blank, then I would do more public speaking. So, dear rock star, What is your if only story or your once I have story? And how is it holding you back from doing the things that you want to do? How is it holding you back from enjoying your life right now? How is it holding you back from being the most expansive, vibrant, creative, inspired and impactful version of yourself? You know, I have a client, um, his name's Tim, and he runs a recruitment consultancy. And we were having a chat and he told me how he also wants to facilitate team building workshops for corporates using Lego. So you get people to build, say, the company vision out of Lego and it's, and it's great for team building. And I asked him, when are you going to start running these workshops? And he said, oh, in about three years from now, once I have more knowledge and experience. 
and I asked him more about how he's going to gain this knowledge and he's learning from a guy who is a master of this type of training, right? He's the Lego master. He's top of the game. And I said to Tim, okay, if this Lego master is at a 10 out of 10 in terms of knowledge, he's up the absolute peak, where do you sit right now in terms of your level of knowledge? And Tim said, oh, I'm about a five. I said, okay, cool. So if you were to run a trial workshop, let's say, for a small group of people who know you um, and you know that they're at level zero, say, for example, me, I've no, I know nothing about team building and le- using Lego. I said, if you were to run a small workshop for people who are at level zero, what level do you think you would need to be as a facilitator in order to run that well? He said, oh, probably level three. I said, okay, that's interesting because you see yourself now as being at level five, yet to run a workshop, you you only need to be at level three. Now, as we explored this a bit further, we discovered that Tim had been telling himself a story of once I am more experienced and at the same level as the Lego master, then I'll be able to run these workshops. So he was thinking, I've got to be this amazing level 10, knowledgeable expert, blah, 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 in order to do this, when really he is capable of running these workshops right now. So we discovered that he didn't have to be at level 10 to run a workshop. He could be at level three. And he also realized that he didn't have to start with a high paid workshop. He could run some smaller free or low cost workshops for people who he already knew. Right? So sometimes when we, uh, so, so what you need to do is when you pinpoint your if only story or your once, your once I have story, I want you to challenge it. Okay. Now one simple thing or simple question you can ask yourself is who would I be without the story? So if I didn't believe, let's take the example, um, if only my English was better, I'd be able to have great conversations. Let's say you didn't believe this story well, you let it go. What if you didn't believe that your English needed to be better in order to have great conversations? I talk more about this in episode 212, um, which is about why changing your story will change your life. Um, And I go deeper there into the questions you can ask yourself to challenge it. Um, I also want you to, to challenge your story by asking what does, what does it actually mean? So for example, um, if you, if you say, if only my English was better, ask yourself, what does better English mean? So like I did with Tim, put it on a scale of, on a scale of one to 10. So let's say level 10 is the most fluent English speaker in the world. And one is zero English. Can't even say hello. Where do you see yourself on that scale? And what level do you think you need to be in order to have a great conversation and be realistic? You, you definitely don't need to be at say level eight or even seven to have a great conversation. I mean, you can have a great conversation with a five-year-old. So if you think about what a five-year-old's level of English is or 10-year-old's level of English, where do you think you need to be in order to have a great conversation? And you may realize that you are already there. And if not, right, so let's say you're, you're, you're saying, oh, I need to be at a level five or a six to have a great conversation. And I may be at a level four or five. Think about So what does that look like? What does getting to that, you know, level four or five actually look like? And what needs to happen to get there? And you know what it probably is? To practice having more conversations, right? Which leads me to my next point. If you're telling yourself a story of once I have X, then I will. I want you to know that that thing that you want to have comes as a result of the doing. Okay? So going back to other to our example, if you're saying once I have a better level of English, then I will have better conversations, you you will actually ha- you need to have more conversations in order to improve your English. Right? So you got to reverse it. Such as the same as I need experience in order to get that promotion. Well, when you get the when you get the promotion, when you apply for that promotion, you actually get the experience of that. If you're waiting to have your ideas perfectly articulated before you speak up, well, speaking up will actually help you to articulate your ideas and you'll get that feedback straight away. You'll speak up and go, okay, that I didn't do that as well as I could and you'll improve for next time. If you're waiting to be more confident before you do more public speaking, 
just know that the confidence comes after you've done the public speaking. Okay, you can't build confidence beforehand without actually doing it. You may believe that you need to um, be more qualified in order to be seen as an expert. But hey, if you call yourself an expert and when you act and speak like an expert, expert, other people will see you as being qualified. So whatever story you're telling yourself around if this, then that, or if only I, or you know, once I'm here, then I'll be blah, 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 then flip it. See if you can flip it. Another example, right, outside work. I have a friend who wants to get fit and healthy. So I invited him to a 100-minute boot camp and I said, you know, you want to get fit and healthy, come along. And he wrote to say that he wouldn't come because he'd rather train on his own until he was an, I quote, absolute specimen before he came to train with other people. Now I'm thinking, dude, you've got it all backwards. If you want to become an absolute specimen – then the accountability and challenge of working out with other people will be more likely to get you there. It reminds me of a a quote that you may have heard me say before, but I love it, so I'm going to say it again. You don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great. That's from Zig Ziglar, one of my favorite quotes. So what are you waiting for? I want you to stop waiting for things to line up for the timing to be perfect, to be more confident, to be more experienced or more qualified or more fit or more senior or more wealthy because you will be waiting forever. So I encourage you to let go of your story and start acting from a place of success right now. That, my friend, is where you see true growth results and fulfillment. All right, peace out, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend, a colleague, or a family member, and make sure you tell them to subscribe to Stand Out, Get Noticed. Say, it's this awesome podcast. You should totally subscribe. Tell them episodes come out every Wednesday or Tuesday night, depending on where you are. Thanks so much for sharing and spreading the word. I really appreciate it. Keep on being awesome, and I'll talk to you next week. My name's Christina Canters, and this has been Stand Out, get noticed.